Okay, next chapter then, I'd like to, uh, next section, talk about more details in the network uh, overview shown here. What I'd like to point out is something in the three different networks. We have a ring network, a star network, and a bus network topology that uh, I'm going to explain to you. The interesting thing is, with respect to CAN is the CAN is a bus topology. The idea is that there's nodes or ECUs that are attached to the network, and you see here that the network wire is also referred to as the bus. Right now I show a single wire bus with nodes or modules or ECUs, whatever you want to call them, connected to the main bus. CAN is a bus topology. Some of the other networks that I've mentioned uh, happen to be uh, other topologies. For example, uh, FlexRay. I mentioned that a bit. You can have a ring network topology in FlexRay. FlexRay is, uh, is used for the X by wire, the safety critical applications. One of the ways that they have um, designed FlexRay is to have some redundancy in it. So if you're using a ring network, notice where I'm pointing here. If you have uh, a wire that's broken where my pointer is, uh, I still can accomplish communication because in a ring topology, I have two-way communication. I can go clockwise or I can go counterclockwise. So if my wire's broken where I'm pointing to, well, I can still accomplish communication on the ring because I can send the message the other way around. So one of the advantages of ring topology is that there is some redundancy built into it. The disadvantage of a ring topology, of course, is redundancy costs money. And I mentioned that, uh, again, talking about flex ray, there is some expense. Flex ray is going to be more expensive than, let's say, a CAN network. The star topology is an interesting one because... Uh, the idea of a star topology, it's very cost sensitive. In the star topology, typically we have a center node or the main node is um, the master. And the satellites, the nodes that are connected to it, you see, are connected directly to a master. So each node is communicated to directly by um, a master talking to the slave or a master talking to the satellite. The star topology allows the satellite nodes to be very simple nodes, very low cost, um, not a lot of intelligence built into them because all the intelligence is contained in the, in the central node, into the star, uh, the, 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 the main node. Star topology, therefore, is, is likely to be a cheaper network that you can build, but with any engineering system, there's always trade-offs. So the trade-off here is that you have a central failure point. If the master, the central node dies, you're out of luck because nobody can talk to anyone. The bus topology has a lot of advantages because in automotive systems, um, we find it's a simple uh, topology. You can route the harnesses. You don't have to have uh, redundant uh, connections in the bus topology, so you don't have to remember to and find a way and pay for routing the harness so it connects one side and connects to another end. So the, so the uh, uh, harnessing is usually simpler, simpler in the bus topology. Also, the failure mechanism in the bus topology <clears throat> that we're going to talk about for CAN, it's a multi-master topology uh, system, bus system. So each one of the nodes, each one of the ECUs connected to the network acts as a master, its own master. And so if that node dies, the rest of the network ought to be able to con carry on and continue communication. So the advantage of uh, CAN bus technology is it's a multi-master, and if one of the nodes die you can still accomplish your communication scheme. <clears throat>